You're watching a segment of The Splash, Greater West Bloomfield's news magazine show. Welcome back to The Splash, everyone. I'm Jonathan Jackson, and my guest on the show this week is Dr. Mona Hanna Tisha. She's the director of Hurley's Pediatric Residency Program, a placeholder within Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People of 2016, and a resident here within the township of West Bloomfield. So, Dr. Mona, thank you for stopping by today. Thanks for having me, Jonathan. It's great to be here. Not a problem. Well, Dr. Mona, around this time last year is when you had started to notice that correlation between the lead levels in Flint and also the lead poisoning in children. And, uh, you know, since then you've had a very busy year to say the least, but can you take us back to that moment last year when you had just started to notice this? Absolutely. So it was uh, almost exactly a year ago. It was August of 2015, and I was at my home here in West Bloomfield, and a high school girlfriend was over for dinner. Mm -hmm. um, and my girlfriend happens to be a water expert. She used to work for the EPA, and she's done a lot of water quality work. And she was asking me about how the water was going in Flint. And I'm like, you know, people are complaining, but the state tells us it's okay. I'm like, there's bacteria issues, and there's all these other issues. Um, and then she shares with me that they forgot to add or they neglected to add corrosion control in the Flint water. And in the water engineering world, that's an absolute no-brainer. Every water treatment has to have corrosion control. Exactly. It's like it's like a medicine that you put in the water to prevent the, co the pipes from corroding. Right. And it was that night that she told me, without this medicine that you put in the water, there's a risk of lead getting into the water. And that was the very first time, about a year ago, that I heard the possibility of lead being in the water. Um, we'd heard about bacteria and color problems and odor problems and all the other problems, but we never heard the word lead. And that's a big no-no that, in the health community. Yeah, that's, no, a, yeah. that's a no-brainer. You don't right. mess around with lead. Um, as a pediatrician, as somebody with a public health background, um, lead is a potent, irreversible neurotoxin and it impacts our most vulnerable children. And once it's in the bodies of our children, there's little that we can do. Mm -hmm. um, so it was from that point on that I kind of really started my crusade to see if the lead in the water was getting into the bodies of our children. Yeah, and when you started that, uh, by the next month you had already released your findings yeah. to the public and yeah. unfortunately you were not well received. Can you tell us what happened yeah. when that, yeah. So, um, you know, after that night we started doing research mm -hmm. and this was like record research. I've never yeah. done a research project this quickly yeah. um, and it's because we really didn't sleep you know it was uh, it was not something you could sit on it was a not a nine to five issue we wanted to see you know what our children's lead levels were doing right. um, so by late September so just really a month later we had our findings and we saw this increase in children's um, in the percentage of children was with elevated lead levels which yeah. was contrary to every trend that was happening in the nation in the state and even in the city of Flint mm -hmm. Um, so we released these findings at a press conference, which is also something very unusual. You don't release <laughs> medical research in right, press conference. Right, yeah, exactly. Um, but very much um, we had this professional, this moral, ethical obligation to alert the community. Yeah. Um, and I felt great after this press conference. I'm like, yay, we're going to protect children. People are going to take precautions. Um, and I felt great for maybe a half an hour, and then right away you were just, um, yeah, we were attacked, dismissed, uh, yeah. dismissed um, called an unfortunate researcher that I was causing near hysteria. Um, so many different things, and and we we knew our numbers were right. We had checked, we had triple checked. Yeah, you spent countless hours just right. trying to make that. Um, yeah. But when the whole state tells you you're wrong, um, it's hard not to second guess yourself. So, right. um, you know, there was definitely kind of a, a, a feeling of doubt of, of you know what have I done? I put my whole reputation, my career, my institution, my medical center at risk. Um, but then quickly, you know, we regrouped and thought thought back. We're like, yeah. this is why we are right, and this is why you know you are wrong, um, and there is a serious problem here. Well, yeah, and, and especially uh, um, like early this year is when, you know, the Flint water crisis really started to get a lot yeah. of public and national attention yeah. and people realize just the severity of this situation. Yeah. And since then, you have been all across the world, you know, promoting and letting people know of how important right. this is. Yeah. So, I mean, that that's commendable and, you know, it's, it's a lot of hard work, I'm sure. Yeah, you know, people, we haven't been hearing much about the Flint water crisis recently. So obviously no, yeah. the media's died down and people think the problem's fixed, but it's, it's not fixed. We are in our third year in Flint where we cannot drink this water. So my kids in clinic, they turn on the tap and they cannot drink that water without a filter or using alternatives like bottled water. So we are very much still in the middle of this crisis. 
Um, and you know, Congress in DC has given zero dollars to Flint. So we have also, so I keep talking and I will continue talking to everybody because we have yet of to course, really yeah. garner that support for our long-term reco recovery. Unlike a flood or a hurricane or another natural disaster, this is something we just can't clean up from. This is something that we may have to deal with for decades or generations. So we really need to keep talking about Flint so we can garner those resources um, to make sure our children not only recover, but, but really thrive after exactly. this disaster. I mean, because even though they had, the, you know, the feds officially released that, there are water filters being released to the public sure. in Flint. Yeah, but unfortunately, you know, not everyone can get access to those yeah. or in time, but you know, an issue like this happening in Flint, which is a big city, it could happen in any you know city. Unfortunately, even here in West Bloomfield, but yeah. but the good thing is you know you are helping to alert people of this issue, and and here in West Bloomfield too. I mean, you are uh, not sort of like a celebrated hero, I'd have to say. I mean, you have br brought a lot of you know uh, uh, honor and. Uh, uh, I guess a lot of appreciation for who you, what you've done. Thank so you. we want to thank you for that thank as well. Yeah, I'm just uh, I'm just doing my job. This is yeah. this is definitely my job as a pediatrician to mm -hmm. take care of kids. Yeah. Um, yeah. And especially to take care of kids who are vulnerable and who, um, who, you know, who need more attention maybe than maybe other kids. Exactly. Well, Dr. Mona, thank you again for being here, and thank you for doing all your hard work as well. We Thanks. appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Jonathan. Oh, once again, everybody, uh, Dr. Mona, thank you for joining me today. But also, we just want to say. Uh, continue to look out for the Flint water crisis and help these people in Flint because they still need the support and they still need this attention and all of our help. So please, everyone, continue to support them and Thank you. Stay, keep them in your prayers. So. Thanks for watching a segment of The Splash. To catch the entire show or other segments, watch us on Comcast Channel 15 or AT&T Channel 99. Or look us up online at thesplash.tv and listen to us on WBLD 89.3 The Lakes FM.